Hi, I'm Saren. And I'm Ray. We're your spider baby hosts from To Know Her Is To Fear Her, a Spider Woman podcast, as well as proud members of the collective. You're listening to Capes and Lunatics. Gimme, gimme. Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to make sure you know all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on all new episodes of Wade's World, Boob Windows and Long Boxes, our hard R movie reviews, and so much more, all completely uncensored. Access starts for as little as $1 a month, full videos when you pledge $3 a month. Check us out at the link in all of our show notes, or just go straight to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luca Parrish, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Diggity dink. Hello and welcome back to another week of the Nightwing News. I am Phil, joining me as always, it is... Hi, I'm Kristen. And... And this is my cat, Nightwing. (laughs) (laughs) Me, wow. Anyway, tonight we are here to talk new issue, finally got the new issue, Nightwing 81. And... Classic issues, what, Batman Family? 7 and 11. Yep, 7 11. So, yes. Both classics. Alright, so. As you know, kids, here on the late news, we'll start with the new issue first, so. I don't know, I. I th- this issue is part of the new disturbing trend where, like. One, I guess people weren't trying to sell it yet, but I know I know this, at my store today, my, uh, my guy was saying this is like, he already sold out of this, I guess, maybe because of the ending, I don't know. The ending! <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Alright, so, let's get into this. Remember, last time we uh, left Nightwing, he was face-to-face with Heartless. Yep. But we also see uh, Melinda Zuko being sworn in as mayor of Bloodhaven. Yeah, and okay, Melinda Zuko, it, she's new, right? We have not yeah. seen her before, because yeah, no, last time it was Sophia Branch Zuko, mm-hmm. so this is a new supposed daughter of Toonies. <laughs> yeah, what was it, 78 was her, yeah, her first appearance, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. All right, and... All over it. Uh, and then we see Blackbuster again. Oh, yeah. Kind of like at the Last Supper there. Yeah. I just have to say, I saw a fanfic somewhere where they were like, all right, they're borrowing canon from the old Nightwing. I can too. And they, you know, borrowed a different stuff. I just hope, I think I've said this before. I just hope that if they're repeating some of the same stuff that happened in Bloodhaven, they don't do the whole tarantula and murdering Blockbuster in front of Nightwing and the rape and all that stuff. And, like, and I don't want all of it to happen. Like, I don't want Dick to feel guilty about, oh, I didn't save crappy Block. Like, that whole thing where he was getting... Bro- I just hope none of that happens. Yeah, I don't think they're going to repeat that. Yeah, no. I hope not. <laughs> think we can all go through it twice it was too much <laughs> as bad as some of their stuff is yeah i don't think they'll repeat stuff like that yeah yeah, uh, yeah. all right so but yeah heartless lets the kids out of the fire because he wants them to run but he wanted to face uh, he wanted to face uh bloodhaven's guardian angel again good art <laughs> heartless is like super strong but he doesn't have the skills yeah, that weird heart gun mm-hmm he has the upgrades, but he hasn't done the work. <laughs> like, try to take a shortcut to super villainy. <laughs> yeah, I love Dick talking to Barbara, but me, you know, because but Heartless is just like, do you always narrate your fights? Just the boring ones. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Just stay out of his reach and employ counter superhuman techniques. <laughs> And then he's mad, so he goes, oh, you absolute, I guess he says S-H-I-T, I don't know. He says a four-letter word. Yeah, something. That's just symbols. You know what? i kill you later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he's like, you think I'm letting you walk away? Of course you'll let me walk away, because I know your pathetic weakness. You care. And those kids are running to the pier or exactly where I wanted them. He's like, so yeah, that Dick calls uh, Tim and's like, I need to get those kids out. The kids off but the instead, they're already at the end of the pier, so thankfully, 
They don't get blown up. No. Nope. And instead, Take you ask for help. Yeah, Dick has Barbara. Yeah, tune in the what Maritime Distress Channel. That's right. Hoping people. And Tim's all like, "We're relying on the kindness of the strangers of Bloodhaven," but you know, Bloodhaven's not all bad. I mean, I would say the same thing. I mean, it would be shocking for me to. Re- I mean, there's a lot of jerks in the world, but seriously, if you were like a bunch of kids are in danger of drowning. I definitely think people would come, which they do. We have a couple dramatic moments, but then also the names of the ships. <laughs> it starts with so it starts cute. with the Devin, as in Devin Grayson. That's right, uh, and then the Seely, <laughs> Tim Seely, yeah, like Tim, uh, and then the Leonardi. I'm not sure when. Yeah, that's how uh, he was a penciler. He was, I th- he was on at least uh, at least some of Devin's run. Yeah, it was in uh, Ron okay. Ronardi, yeah. And then Jurgens, Dan just did that. Yeah. The constant is that. I mean, that must be somebody's last name. I'm, so yeah, like some of the writers I recognize, Fernandez, but. But yeah, I think they just threw in a couple writers and artists. Yeah. Yeah, that was cute. <laughs> then we see Dick's head is bleeding. No. Oh. Uh huh. I love it's like, well, yeah, you, you you already have, you have, you have traumatic, traumatic head injuries, you know? I mean, yeah, I have to say, I do think it's a good job that they, because honestly, I can't really think of too many other comics where they remind us, oh yeah, this person was seriously injured. I mean, most of the time in comics, people who are human and aren't invincible, they still act like they are. <laughs> well, especially since we've, you know, spent the last two years with uh, Rick Grayson. Yeah. So then we have that moment of darkness, and then uh, he's back with his friends. I'm he's sur- like, you lost consciousness. Why? You're still recovering from being shot in the head, and you were punched. <laughs> By an enhanced supervillain. Uh, also, then, I noticed it right away that Barbara was wearing a shirt of that Batman slapping Robin Oh, yeah, meme. that meme, yes. <laughs> The little t-shirts and stuff have been really pretty, uh, pretty stellar. You know the famous uh, Batman and Robin meme kids. Yeah. Which I have the comic. I mean, I don't have the comic. I have it in a collection. Yeah. And I always love to point this out because it's from a collection of imaginary stories. <laughs> As opposed to all the other Batman stories. And then we get the joke about the name because Tim says, Bitewing was worried about you. Ah, oh, the puppy. Then we get the official name. He's like, that's a great name, but her I name is Haley. Yes. I love Tim. Tell the people in this room we can't have two names. Barbara, I have three. three. So, yeah. so, yeah. Haley Bitewing. So, Tim, so Tim says the kids are okay. They're back on the street, but they're okay. And then Barbara's figured out the yes, uh, who Maroney was meeting with, Mayor Zuko. So... And she was raised by the Maroney crime family. I know. He's like, oh, Tony and Razor, that's positive. And then Tim's like, she was raised by the Maroney's. He's like, ah, worse. Uh. <laughs> For a moment there, you thought, all right. And then they're like, ah, worse. Ooh. Dang it. I would like to say, though, when Tim says not a lot of good, decent people have a large FBI file, that is, in fact, untrue. Um, because historically speaking, uh, there have been a lot of civil rights figures and stuff that had large FBI files. So you do not have to be a bad person to have a large FBI file. Well, I was going to say, what kind of file do you have, Kristen? Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> but I don't think I have a large FBI file. So you could be a really bad person with a large FBI file. Or you could be a really good person that the government just doesn't like. It's just all of us average people in the middle that don't have large FBI files true but yes i'm guessing that because you haven't heard of melinda zuko as you know the next mlk uh or something that she probably has a bad fbi file oh yeah oh well, i mean just saying if you grow up just in- saying though if you historically grew- look up cointel pro people you'll see <laughs> if you grew up in a crime family yeah they probably do keep a foul a big foul on you uh so they're going through her whole thing. Uh, yeah, I do like how Oracle's computer has her own face on it. <laughs> it's her brand. 
Awesome. But yeah, Zuko was, a, you know, Melinda was set up, but, you know, to take the mayor's place, you know, as soon as he was killed. Pretty sure we saw that happen when Blockbuster squeezed his head, right? Yep, Nightwing 78, or the first Tom Taylor issue. That's right. Uh, there's my editor's note. Mm. And Dick's like, he's going to go pay her a visit. And they're like, no, you have a concussion. I love Tim. Come on. Yeah. You have a concussion. You're supposed to be more sensible than Bruce. <laughs> I know. That was a good one, too. Proper hydration and eight hours of sleep. But I do understand that he can't rest. So he but can't. dogs are supposed to help with that. By Wings resting. I know. Meanwhile, the dog's like, oh, I get the whole bed to myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Haley. Yeah, so I do just, like how they show how his stick can be used to like do the little cutout uh-huh. thing. And so, yeah, he uh, breaks in. I guess this is a bodyguard for Melinda, this woman. Uh, yeah. Although I thought it might be her partner too. Maybe. I kind of forget now. I mean, okay. she's standing right by the window with a with a uh, looks like a katana or something. That that just screams bodyguard to me. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. She's definitely that, but I wasn't sure if maybe they were. Yeah. I don't know. Knocks him down the stairs. And now some Yuzuko really should have listened. Thud. Yeah, she knocks him out. And Dick wakes up without his mask. And she's like, Dick Grayson, you know me? I know you too. You work for the Maroney crime family. You're the daughter of Tony Zuko. And she's like, no, I'm not. I thought I was for a long time, but I learned the truth. Uh, spoilers, kids. My real father was named John Grayson. I'm your sister. <laughs> Here's my thought. Do you think that's true or she's lying? I don't know. It could go either way. But it's like, if it's true, then what does that mean? Does that mean his father had an affair or something? I know. See, that's why I'm like, I really want it to be fake. Because there's never been anything that, like, John and Mary aren't good people. Exactly. I mean, not that, I mean, not that having an, I mean, the other thing, of course, is I think she's supposed to be older than Dick. So it could have been like. He had a kid and didn't know about it, but no, it just, just, no. <laughs> I mean, it just seems, I mean, it just seems way too ridiculous and convenient. And so I hope it's fake. And let, yeah. Unless it's fake or it's like, or they're testing the waters. Cause like back in Batman RIP, they were trying to, I think Grant Morrison was playing with maybe Alfred was Bruce's biological father. And, you know, he had slept with Martha, but you know, and Thomas was going to be like the big, a big jerk. And even like Dr. Hurt there. And I think people were just like, we're ready to riot, and they're like, no, 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 oh, he's just lying, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I hope that, because it just see. I mean, sometimes I find it very interesting when they kind of, you know, excavate into the past and come up with these new things, and other times it just seems annoying and, like, unnecessary drama. Because I was gonna say, I mean, I guess he could have had a child before he met Mary, but I mean, I mean, Melinda right. like, doesn't seem that old, though. Right, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, is she older than Dick? Um, I mean, pr- probably. She better be older than Dick. That would make it at least not as bad if it was, like, before I met Mary. But I just don't like the implication that John Grayson's a deadbeat dad. <laughs> or, I, or it's, you know, one of those stories, you know, he never knew I was, you know, he never knew my mother was pregnant, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. So. It could be that. But even so, it just, I don't know. It's just, like, a little bit. Tarnishes John Grayson, and I don't know. So is Melinda. I wasn't thrilled. I thought it was, I think it's a cheap shot. I'll be real. I think it's. So is she going to like try to help take down the mobsters or is it now, you know, his sis, or is it now his sister, the crime boss, a crime boss knows who he is. Yeah. I don't know. I think it would go either way, but I hope it turns out that it's. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, just because people say stuff doesn't mean it doesn't mean it's true. And it just seems ridiculous that, oh, yeah, the guy I thought was my dad ended up murdering the guy that's really my dad. And now my brother. Yeah, I know. No. Under ridiculousness. Yeah, so. But I mean, I do. I mean, I do like I mean, Tom Taylor's got the nice mix of like the action and the, you know, in like the uh, heartfelt moments and. You know, because there's some writers, they'll make you just sit there through, like, two, three issues of talking. I mean, we get some action, we get some talk, you know. Tom Taylor. Right, that's why I, that's why I was kind of, like, I think that's why I don't hate it as much as I 
what would yes. otherwise because he's been doing a good job but uh, the pacing's good just, yeah again it could just be you know like a you know they're, he's just trying to trick us be like yeah no, that's not a system yeah my hope yeah my hope is that it's just kind of one of those like hanging you on the head like oh snap kind of kind of things just to get a just to get us all riled up kind of like when they had it oh many years ago because it was pre rick grayson where they were like oh maybe sean's pregnant and dick's gonna be a dad and then he didn't ever or it's gonna be one of those or it's gonna be one of those things where you know she thought john was her father but he turns out not to be her father so but then at the end dick's like oh well you know you may not be blood but you're still like my sister oh yeah yeah like what happened with yoshka or however you say it yeah yeah yeah, so maybe it'll be something, be something like that. But when I saw that, I was kind of like, "Oh, for f's sake!" <laughs> I know. I was like, "Oh, brother!" Again, it just feels a little bit like there's nothing that wrong with it. Kind of like the stuff that happened in that Titans Academy issue that I was like rah, 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 about, but it just feels feels like unnecessary drama and kind of. I know. Kind of getting drama by taking the easy way out. And the art in this, again, oh. is incredible. Yeah. But again, yes, if it does turn out to be that, like, oh, I'm not really, and, you know, we become family, that kind of thing, like, that would be fine. That would be fine. It just, I don't know. I just don't want them to, I mean, they already, when they did the Court of Owls, were like, oh, Haley Circus is actually a little bit nefarious. I don't want them to turn Dick's parents into... Yeah. yeah, they've done some of that with Bruce's parents, like some different interpretations, not really with his mom, but with his dad. Sometimes Thomas is kind of an a-hole, um, and depending on the thing. And I just, and of course, and like Tim's parents have become increasingly jerk faces over the, over the years, um, since Tim was, it's just like, can someone's parents not be terrible? <laughs> It just seems like every they all, everybody always wants to like reinvent the wheel and add like more stuff to people's past, but like the more you do that, the more the parents end up looking bad. So, and I mean, okay, having a kid out of wedlock that you didn't know about is definitely you know like not up there with you know being abusive. It's not like he's immediately going to turn into Jason Todd's terrible parents, uh, but it's just it just feels like a cheap shot at drama i just feel like it's so. i just feel like it's gonna be something like oh, he wasn't my father but i was always told he was my you know father you know yeah yeah i'm just hoping that maybe it turns out to be a lie that like zuko is her dad but then after he murdered the graysons the maronis to like keep her loyal because didn't it, isn't it sometimes that zuko worked for the maronis so he was kind of doing it for them yeah that maybe they told yeah. her a lie like oh he didn't do it for us he actually did it because he found out John was your real father or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah. there's all There's been so many stories with, like, you know, all those crime families intermingling, so. I mean, whatever. It's not horrible, but definitely I was enjoying the issue, and then that page happened, and I was like, meh. <laughs> I'm just looking here, because I saw something online today. I don't know if it's a variant cover for this issue. Yeah. Cause like I saw the pride one, which was pretty cool with like, with like Kim on the, the, on the flagpole. Did you see that one? Yeah. I said you can get a t-shirt of it. Finally, there's some Nightwing stuff at the, in the shop. If we want to use our vouchers, but I did. Oh, is it's in the shop? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's in the DC shop or whatever. But okay. I don't know if this is like going to be a second printing or something, but I just today. Yeah, it is this yeah. issue. There's another variant for 81. Like I said, I don't know if it's for the second printing, but I want this. I want a poster of this or something. See if you can see that. Oh, that is cool. Dick and Tim. Yeah, him there. with Tim. Yeah, it's like almost like they're sitting in the subway. Dick's like leaning against the wall, drinking a drink, and Tim's like on his phone or something, sitting there on the bench. Oh, yeah. Send it to, send it to me in the... Yes. Well, right, do some research, Phil, and send it to me. We'll find out. <laughs> I will. I mean, it says 81, so I don't know, like I said, I don't know if it's a second printing or if there's somehow for this one. Uh, maybe. But hold on, I'm sending it to you. I know. They've been really blowing it out of the water with those second printings. Oh. Like the last week or last time I showed you... Um, oh, thank you. I showed you that the one I bought that was him climbing up the... Yeah. Climbing up the steps. 
Well, I think they've been selling out, so that's why they've been doing second printings and stuff. Oh, yeah, you're right. I do see down in the corner it says second printing. Yeah, because I saw it earlier today and there wasn't a number on it. So I was like, "What? Mom, which one is this? But yeah, it's 81. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's, that, I would like a poster of that or something. <laughs> No, they may, I mean, the covers are all good, but then, how, why do they have to keep making so many good... Ah, they're just trying to take our money, Phil! Well, duh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, revelations about the sister aside. Another A? I mean, I guess revelations about the sister, but then the sister part really plummeted it down for me. Well, B-minus minus now. Again, I, I'm, I'm willing to keep an open mind because again it could just be a big trick or a red herring or something no i mean even keeping in mind that it's a trick i'm assuming i'm choosing to assume it's a trick i'm still like playing with your emotions <laughs> still annoys me <laughs> i mean remember during tim seeley's run wasn't the, the thing of like before mary grayson uh met john wasn't she with uh what was it raptor oh yeah yeah so I mean, people are allowed to date before they. Well, that's meet what I'm their saying. Spouse. So maybe while she was I with, guess. Her, maybe when his mother was with Raptor, John was with uh, Melinda's mother. No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, no. I'm saying it doesn't. John doesn't have to be a Debbie dad. It just yeah. still feels like. Ugh. It just seems weird because it doesn't seem like she's that much older than Dick. I mean, unless she is. Again, it's comics. It better be older than. Better not have cheated on Mary Grayson. I'll be real PO about that. She's steaming. It just would be nice if we could not keep reinventing these parents to have, like, dark and tricky past. See, that's the thing. I mean, yeah, everyone wants to, like, put their own spin on the origins and stuff. And it's just like, you know what? <laughs> Tom, I like what you're doing in the present. No need to, no need for this. <laughs> give us give us more uh, happy, uh, you know, happy-go-lucky, uh, you know, with the feels. Come on. Sure. Whatever. I'm choosing to assume she's lying, though. You gave us the dog. That's good. <laughs> All right. So should we get to the should we get to the Batman yes. family issues? Let's do it. And now you switch the paper, and I switch the digital. Yeah, I own all of these in paper because this is my jam. Oh, those are like the original. And actually, when we get to Batman. 11 it's awesome that i have it in paper because some exciting things were revealed in the letter column yes get ready all right uh yes so these two are not connected i picked them mostly because i do enjoy i mean the stories are good although the story in 7 i think is better than the story in 11 11 let's be real i picked it because of this amazing cover where they have <laughs> where they're getting married and Dick is wearing a Robin tuxedo. Yeah. How awesome is that? <laughs> so awesome. But Seven, I like the story particularly because Bruce cracks me up in it. So I'd just like to know. Bruce is on the phone. Dick, I've been trying to reach you for an hour. Where? You're in Washington? I wanted you to meet me there. Batgirl's apparently been abducted. Now we go to Dick in a phone booth because remember this is the seventies, everyone. <laughs> this is seventy six. Oh. Dick says, "That's why I'm here, Bruce, and I think I can find her on my own. I know more about her than you do. We work together a lot. We're like a team, Batgirl and Robin." My favorite quote, huh? I got the what for her? <laughs> Listen, she's got to be seven years older. Bruce, the dog. Older woman looked pretty good when I was your age, kid. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> uh, cracks me up. Cracks me up. Hey, man, Dick Grayson is an extraordinary person with the agility and speed of a boy and the strength and cleverness of a man. That's right. <laughs> also, I like, <laughs> that's funny with the agility and speed of a boy. I mean... You can be a teenager or a young adult and be speedy. You don't have to be a little kid. <laughs> I mean, I get I get it, but it just sounds a little bit funny. Because they're just like, he is. Also, I love how in Batman Family and when he's in college, Dick has a Volkswagen bus. <laughs> yes. A red one, yes. <laughs> That's pretty quality. <laughs> pretty quality. But yes, mostly I love to read this one because of Bruce's hilarity at the beginning and the end. With so we also get established that Barbara is definitely older than Dick mm -hmm. and kind of by a lot by seven years. And Bruce, of course, 
offering his kind of terrible relationship advice of older women look pretty good. <laughs> Although, um, when the older woman is Barbara Gordon, obviously. Yeah. Uh, who wouldn't want to date Barbara Gordon? She's amazing. Uh, so. Uh, then they're getting captured. They're getting captured. Blah, blah, blah. And. Oh, yeah. She, uh, there's that bank robbery. They show she was trying to break up and then, uh, <laughs> she disappears. Yep. And Robin goes back to the scene of the crime. It gets, whoop, falls down the chute, lands on the pillows. Trap and door. Yep. Then there's a voice. Mm. Take the airline ticket on the table. Ooh, Southwest Airlines. Some free advertising. When was Southwest started? I think Southwest was started right around this time. Maybe. Oh, but I love. Sure they got we got this in the Titans a little bit, but is this this might be when it started. You know, he he gets on the plane disguised. He's wearing that beard and wig. Yes, I know. Southwest, yeah, Southwest was founded in 1967, so it's real. Oh, I don't know if Southwest moved to Mexico at that point. I know, but he goes, like, all out with that disguise. <laughs> so much hair. <laughs> but it is the 70s. Covers his head, too, but... And it just so happens, the plane he's on, uh, someone tries to hijack it. Oh, what do you mean, just so happens? They know he's gonna be on that! They gave him the plane ticket! <laughs> yeah, but I don't think it had anything to do with, like, uh, Batgirl's kidnappers. I think it just happened... Isn't it just, like, a random hijacker? Just, like... Because Dick takes him out, then he's like, oh, you know, here, guys, I'll swap him, I'll swap this for, this guy for a parachute. No, he says, I'm obviously expecting to make a no. landing below, because the guy says, go to a private airstrip due east of Hidalgo, Mexico. Oh, yeah. Mm, you're right, maybe not. I don't know, maybe, oh, well, no, I think, he, oh, they, oh, yeah, uh, they got Batgirl, and they said they'd kill her if you don't, if you didn't let me go. Yeah, he's part of it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's not, <laughs> not just random, okay. No. So, yeah, so, uh. Yeah, Dick parachutes out where he's supposed to. And then we get uh, Huntress and Sportsmaster, who most recently you've, you saw, uh, what, last summer on Stargirl Season 1. That's so. Mm -hmm. This is one thing that annoys me, and I think I said this to you before. Why do we have to have a Huntress who's good and a Huntress who's bad? Aren't there enough names in the world that we can give them two different names? And I'm assuming, is there, is there like... I'm assuming these two are from Earth 1 and they have Earth 2 counterparts. And then you have Helena Wayne on Earth 2, who's also Huntress. So it's like you might Right, freeze. that's what I mean. Like, come on. Can we come up? I mean, even in the Titans, when they stole Starfire for Starfire, they gave Red Star a new name. I know. Well, I guess they're on Lots of names. There's lots of fish in the sea. There's lots of names to be invented. Come up with some... I mean, it kind of makes sense. Nightwing, if he wants, you know, borrowing it from the Kryptonian legend. Okay. But like, don't just be naming people the same thing as other people. Why particularly not? villains and good people, same name. What the heck? I guess at this point, they're just like, uh, someone else on Earth, too. It don't matter. <laughs> mm. There are lots of names out there. They could have come up with something else. <laughs> Yeah, we get like the anyway. At least her costume is different. Yes, <laughs> it's very groovy cheetah costume, or maybe tiger. Sorry, tiger. Ugh. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. But, yeah, like a cheetah or a tiger costume and like a red cape. <laughs> yeah, I think I well, I think it's supposed to be. I think the cape is red on the inside and tiger on the outside. I think it's supposed to be stripes. Let's so see. I think it's tiger, but the boots it does look a little more spotted. Whatever. It's still better than like sports. This sports master looks like it looks like a golfer. <laughs> I know with like a motorcycle helmet or something. Well, okay, actually, he just wears whatever sporting outfit he wants. So actually, he is that's kind of smart. You could just wear whatever, mm -hmm. so long as you can wear it to play a sport. Boom. Then he's way. What do you think when we're on that page? Beckles coming around. What is that racquetball he's wearing? I don't know what's well, weird because it's like does time pass or something because look at the top of the page he's wearing that red and white thing and then by like two panels later he's in like a purple costume. Uh, is he like in the middle? He of just, maybe he just finished playing racquetball and so now he immediately changes into his fencing outfit. Well, it feels like he's changing clothes in the middle of their conversation. Uh, yeah, I think he is. Wow. But then we see Rob and his parachuted in. Mm. 
Mm. And he trips a wire and gets electrocuted. And now they're going to have a chariot race, a la Ben-Hur. I assume that's the movie. He says, by splintering her spokes with a trick I saw in an old movie. Yes, because they say the winner, only the winner will be blown up. <laughs> like, oh, we have to win. And then Batgirl's like, I see what Robin's doing. So she shoots his arrow. They fence to a standstill. All right, and then they have to go up to the apex of the pyramid. Yep. And they, yeah, they're they're tricked into the pyramid to steal that uh, the ruby. Right, they dive in. Now I don't. Do you see Batgirl throwing something down? Um, I mean, she must throw that airbag that airbag down. She must I, have something she can squeeze. Yeah, I mean, that must be in her belt or something. Because yeah, I mean, all she it's right below them. So all she'd have to do is drop it straight down. <laughs> but watch the spikes on the wall. Got to get close. There's the trinket, and she's like, wait a minute, that's the ruby, that's not a trinket. Mm -hmm. They're like, so they figure out the set been fooled. So then they come up with a plan, so Robin goes back up and uh, says, here's the ruby, Batgirl's right behind me. But he's holding it with the hand that they would explode. She realizes, he knows, he figured out we couldn't get the Kamei without their athletic skill. Mm -hmm. and, then and then, Boom. Batgirl jumps out. Don't call your husband names with Robin around. His delicate ears can't take it. Yes, because when I think of people with delicate ears, I think of university freshmen. <laughs> so yeah, they Probably heard worse at his boarding house. <laughs> they're basically throwing this ruby around and eventually I uh, just like capture both Cheetah and Sportsmaster. Huntress and Sportsmaster. Yeah, it turns into a game. See, he's trying to get it with... Now, what's that thing he's got? What game is that where you got the scoop for the oh, ball? That's um. Oh, what is that? I forget. But yeah, I know that. Oh no! Wait, it says a tool of a sport. Jai a lie, a lie. There's some other so some other kind of raggedy ball sport. Also, does oh yeah, monkey in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then they're both trying to get the ruby and yoink. Ah, uh, they got tied up. Mm. They have to tie them both up. I love Batgirl. Which wonder which one of us will get this will look good in the papers. Wonder which one of us will get top billing. I also like how they have this like hovercraft, but they can't figure out how to get the ruby out of the they can have that kind of technology, but they can't just like make a long stick to get the ruby. I but know. I guess it's easier because they're like, eh, we're villains. We don't care. We'll make other people do our unpaid labor and then kill them. Unless That's how we roll. Unless they're worried about booby traps or something. That could be. Yes, so who will get top billing? And then we end with Bruce. Ah, hilarious again. Alfred, have you seen it? Aren't you proud? Who's like, proud, I suppose. And Alfred gives him the lowdown. And then Bruce, I brought that young man up as if he were my own son, Alfred. I was impressed with Dick's intelligence and skill at an early age with his eagerness to learn. I was impressed enough to make him my partner, enough to let him strike out on his own. I'm not impressed by the amazing accomplishments of Batgirl or Robin anymore. I've come to expect them. Then he puts his feet up on the desk. I'm surprised Alfred doesn't have a heart attack right there. Bruce makes it all about himself. He's like, yes, look at the, look, look, look at the talent I scouted. <laughs> I honed him. <laughs> this cracks me up because in this one, it's funny, but then unfortunately, it also like kind of hits you a little bit because then later writers, they kind of made this a salient character trait of Bruce that he's like, yeah, sure, I'm proud of you, but I expect you to make me proud, so I never tell you I'm proud of you, so you're always constantly, uh, so you're always constantly struggling to make me more proud of you, but I love you, and you are not sure if I love you, and so we just keep going round and around and around. It's like, okay, in 1976, that was kind of amusing, because you hadn't turned Bruce into, like, yeah. I've come to expect this stuff as a salient character trait, and then later they did, so now, reading it later, you're, like, a little bit like, oh, ouch. <laughs> I wasn't Bruce supposed to meet Dick in Washington or something? Yeah, but Dick was like, I got a handle. And Bruce was like, all right. I guess. It just looked like Bruce never left. He's like, yeah, I expect it. Good job. But I expect you to do a good job every time. Hey, Bruce was like, older women look pretty good to me when I was your age. So maybe he doesn't want to, you know. Mess up the face. I know. Mess up what Dick's got going on there. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like not officially anything, but you know, Bruce just trying to be a bro. 
I mean, at least on that last page, couldn't we have at least seen like a phone call or something for saying, hey, Dick, good job. Uh, and tell Batgirl I said, good job also. But then it's not funny. I guess, but you know, it, it could have made some kind of sports joke or something. Let's assume he sent him a telegram. <laughs> good, good job, kid. That was quite the touchdown you made against crime. <laughs> But that's why I like it. I mean, it's a fine story, but also the Bruce stuff always cracks me up. Mm. Plus, little woman looked pretty good when I was your age, chum. Oh, Bruce. Deep inside the psyche of Bruce Wayne. At least Dick likes good girls. I'm like Bruce. So true. So true. Oh, yeah, which is funny because somebody in this one, in the letter column, because this is the letter columns for five, mm. and they were like, Robin making a pass at Batgirl? And they were like, yeah. But then somebody was like, he should check out Catwoman. Yeah. Robin seems to be getting interested in older women. How about getting her romantically involved with Catwoman? I think the Teen Wonder is old enough to appreciate the same things in her that Batman does, but also young enough not to be so made of stone with his emotions. I'm glad they didn't do that, though. That would be weird. That would be weird. <laughs> Almost as if Batman would, if Batman would have been interested in Batgirl, or anything would have happened between them. Boy, that would be weird. Let's see the Killing Joke movie. <laughs> also, doesn't that happen in Batman Beyond too? Yeah, yeah. Or again, that Bruce Tim again. So it's like he seems to have a thing with. <laughs> <laughs> Feast your eyes on the wedding of Robin and Batgirl with their amazing white wedding Batgirl suit and Robin tux. Honestly, I feel like you should kind of consider adopting the Robin Tux. I mean, it covers your body. Like, it's got it's got some things that recommend it. I mean, Dick Riz doesn't wear a Robin costume anymore. Oh, can you imagine Damien? Oh, look at that one. That one I love. Look at how it fits with the boots. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so perfect. <laughs> Cracks me up. No, I know. He could have worn it in the... There's really just, like, not that much green. Make Damien wear it. It'll be like his. Look like he's making his first Holy Communion or something. <laughs> I don't think Damien's Catholic though. So oh, yeah. <laughs> I said looks uh, like <laughs> some other religious ceremony. No, he should wear it. He should wear it to like a school dance. <laughs> a school dance that's formal yet also a costume party. <laughs> so what kind of school? School for assassins. <laughs> Um, I'm sure some fancy pants Gotham private school would have a dress up costume party dance that he could wear it to. Oh, in the Super Sons Bowl, Kim and uh, John Kent were going to the same school. I forget if it was Gotham or Metropolis, but yeah, they were both going to like the same school. Well, then they could. Oh, then they could wear Robin and Superboy tuxes together. They're kind of doing a flashback, another flashback miniseries now because they aged up John Kent, so it's like they really can't hang out as much anymore. <laughs> Weird. Weird. Oh, because, yeah, next month, John Kent getting his own Superman book uh, written by mm, some guy named Tom Taylor. Wait, the same guy who's writing Nightwing? Yep. Yes, There'll man. be secret revelations about John Kent's father. <laughs> uh, I think we know who his father is. <laughs> I mean, he flies. <laughs> we do know who his father is. We also know who Dick's father is. That's why the secret revelations are secret and shocking. His mother. All right, so then this one... People are trying to murder Dick and Barbara Maze, which is a crime for hire organization. I don't know. I think we mostly just see in Batman family, but I don't know. It's kind of hard to keep up. I do enjoy Robin making all these uh, graveyard jokes, and the uh, and the cops are like, "What the heck?" <laughs> He's fun, you know. Who is trying to kill you? I'm dying to know too, Chief. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, that it's cheesy, but kind of funny. Not Dick Grayson. Oh. And then we get this random old man who goes to the gas station bathroom, which, uh, that's one of the cleanest gas station bathrooms I've ever seen. Just want to point that out. And yells at the mirror, which it turns out is secretly transmitting to some dude. Mm, yep. 
That reminds me a lot of, oh, what's that, Inspector Gadget, where his enemy's host just, like, sitting in the chair with the cat. <laughs> oh, yeah, and all you see is his hand, I think, too, because, look, you just see yeah. <laughs> Yep. And then Chapter 2, The Final Days of Batgirl. Oh, no. Hiding in this parking garage. Yep. Because there's an and... information leak in the Congressional Committee. Right, which this... I mean, again, willing suspension of disbelief, but they did at least make it have a little bit more sense in Batman the Animated Series, where Dick stayed in Gotham, went to college in Gotham, and Robin part-time, because it's like, let's be real. I mean, whatever, it's fine, but in terms of secret identity, everyone knows Robin's from Gotham and Batgirl's from Gotham, and then suddenly, Robin starts showing up in... Hudson University. Exactly. Like, just look at the kids who are from Gotham. You'll pretty easily be able to narrow it down, and it won't take that much to guess. And with Barbara, I think it's even worse. Like, oh, there's someone from... There's a female red-headed bad girl from Gotham, and then, boom, new congresswoman, Barbara Gordon, female, red-headed, shows up in D.C., and shortly thereafter, bad girl does. Like, how do you not put two and two together? <laughs> I know. Suspension of the big suspension of disbelief. Huge suspension of of disbelief. But I was just saying, for whatever reason, it just really hit me randomly when I was read when I was reading this. I think partially because she's like, oh, there's a leak on my congressional committee. I'm like, oh, and so Batgirl investigates it. Like people aren't gonna figure hmm, which committee was the leak on. Who's redheaded and from Gotham? Just like Batgirl. Oh, Congresswoman Barbara Gordon. Again, a suspension of disbelief, but I mean, I'd buy it more with Barbara Gordon because it's just like, you know, people might just be like, oh, you know, her dad's the commissioner. He knows all those bad people. See, I don't know. I feel like it's more obvious with Barbara, and I think it's the red hair. Because not a, a much smaller popular portion of the population has red hair than has, than has black hair. And Dick can't be the only Hudson University student from Gotham. I mean, he could be, but let's assume not. But how many of them right. have Bruce Wayne's fortune, though? Well, right, exactly. I Like I'm saying, it would be pretty yeah. easy to figure it out. I feel like Barbara's would be potentially even easier, but they're both pretty freaking easy to mm -hmm. figure out. <laughs> but yeah, she uh, follows this car, supposedly, with the uh, the, uh, the one with the drop, but uh, the car comes around them, her and trashes her motorcycle. And then she pretty much disarms the dry, the guys in the car and crashes them into a wall. Yep, and it's a maze driver, of course. And then uh, the cops show up. Then we see the guy uh, talking to the mirror again. Yep. Um, maze bungled again. I paid for two hits. No, he looks slightly... Uh, is that the same old dude? I mean, he has different clothes on. I can't tell if he has a mustache. Oh, I guess maybe he does. So maybe it's the same old dude. Yeah, the coloring's weird, and yeah, I don't know if it's supposed to be a different day or not, but yeah. Right. Then, this is so random. I mean, whatever, it made for a hilarious cover, but why did they decide that how they're going to get them together is a fake wedding? Like, it could have been anything. <laughs> Are they filming this? Are they going to, like, sell the video after they're dead or something? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, it could have just been, like... Come to this party. Come to this event. Just be here or something bad will happen to the citizens. Like, it really did not have to be what I mean, I'm glad it is because mwah, to that uh, Robin wedding tux, but really, it did not have to be a wedding. It did not have to be a wedding. Again, it, it just plays into the, yeah, the gag of the cover. Right, yeah, it's just hilarious. I love all the guests yeah. like, care holding guns. I know, they're they're like, but then, my greatest sadness, they're not even wearing the outfits in. Ugh. It was like a knife to my heart when I read it, that they just show up in the regular clothes. So sad. But, oh, whoa, so sad. Here comes Robin. He looks like he's in a trance. Mm -hmm. Same with Batgirl. I also like how they say, I will, instead of I do. Like, hmm. hmm. In the, middle, in the Middle Ages, anyway, fun fact, uh, if you say it in the future tense, you're, like, not actually married. Ah. It's, like a it's like a betrothal, like, I will. But if you say it with words of the present tense, then you're married. So, see, our dynamic duo have studied their medieval history. Yeah, although, I mean, now you have to have a marriage license, so if they don't have a marriage license, I'm pretty sure it doesn't count. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the internet wasn't around yet. None of these guys could have went online. 
Right. I mean, I'm not married. You are Phil, but I'm pretty sure if you just showed up and said I do, it would not have counted that you were oh, married no, to your no, wife. No. You have to have that yeah. official paperwork. Yeah, you gotta get But that. in the Middle Ages, there was an official paperwork, so you could just like you just said yeah. the words, and then they were like, okay, gotta get the license. Everyone acknowledged. Them. Yep, gotta get the license. Gotta get the person uh, performing the ceremony to sign it. Then you know. So, yeah, they're obviously not married for a multitude of reasons. Uh, I love how it says, you know, they get to the death, do you, till death do you part, part, and they everyone just starts opening fire. And then you're just like, oh, wow, we blasted them out of existence because they're gone. Like, yeah, like, that's not how guns work. <laughs> no, I mean, you might be like, a, you see, you know, you know, a couple bloody pieces of meat. But, yeah, there'd be something there. Yeah, and there's like really literally nothing, just a bunch of holes in that podium. And da -da -da -da, they come soaring over because y'all are idiots. <laughs> What's that podium made out of? That, yeah, the guy ducks behind it. He's yeah, like, that guy should be dead too, yeah. But then they but, come swinging uh, in. They rigged up a trap door so they could yoink, turn around, and there we go. And then Robin uh, literally throws pepper powder at the guests to make them sneeze. Mm. The Joker would be the Joker would be so proud. <laughs> no, no, you're not supposed to give the bride the kiss of death. And then Batgirl jumps to his arms so she can go. They go running down. She's kicking and punching all those crappy maze guys out of the way. Yep. And they bust out. Boom! Cops come in. Take care of it. And then they explain it to us. Who do you think the old man was? It was Robin. Yep. Oh, yeah, and who do you think who do you think provided financial assistance, Phil? Hmm. I wonder. <laughs> Maybe someone who thinks older women looked pretty good when he was a teenager. <laughs> so yeah. And then she says, "You make quite an attractive older man, Robin." No, no, he does not. <laughs> Well, yeah, because they had to do the epilogue page to explain everything. Yeah, Robin knew Maze was back in operation, but couldn't break it up without finding the head man. Mm. Yeah. But Robin does not look attractive as that old guy. He looks ridiculous. I know. You know, it was after she says that, he's like, you know, maybe I'll keep this disguise on for a while. <laughs> it's like, please don't. You guys are ridiculous. He does not look good. All right. And then here, revealed through the letter columns. Someone asked, uh, what's up with, so this is about Batman Family number nine, which involved Dula Dent again, and they're like, uh, what's up with Dick and Dula Dent basically being the same age? This doesn't make any sense. Uh, they're like, she must have been born after Harvey was scarred when Robin was at least 12, uh, so what's up with that? And, BR, so that'd be Bob Rosakis, right? Uh, I think yes, Bob Rosakis, the writer. Where he says, um, "This is an example of selective aging in comics." Yeah. Yes, there should be a ten-year difference in age between Dick and Dula, but for the sake of the story, there isn't. You can make people age however you want. It says, "And it's a good thing." Or Batman would be sixty-five and Robin forty-eight today. So while Dick was aging from twelve to nineteen, uh, Dula grew from infancy to eighteen. Okay. So my seven. So now this one, eleven, is May June seventy seven. Uh, so since nineteen sixty nine, when Dick first went to college, he's aged a year. Even though it turns out he hasn't, <laughs> we ages backwards when he goes to the Titans because it's only been a semester. Um, but yes, so Batman would be sixty five and Robin forty eight. So that's seventeen years between them. Uh, and it sets it up that Bruce was born in 1912, so he was like 27 when he started Batmaning. Uh, and with this, they make it that Dick was about that Dick would have been born in 29, so he would have been about 11. Even though then later on they have him, they kind of have him be eight. But there you go. Well, wasn't that always the big complaint? It's like you know, Dick aged how many years, and it seemed like Bruce never aged while Dick was aging. <laughs> right, but Dula Dent aged a lot. Oh, yeah. Or Dula. Although then later, as the one we read in, what, 50, 55, whichever one was Donna's wedding, that Dula's like way older. She's like, yeah, whatever. I was teasing you. I'm not really. So we don't really know what's up with her. No. 
At this point, she's probably more like Harvey's sister or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, they, they if the character sticks around long enough, it's like, um, like you watch, you, like you watch the Captain America movies, right? Yeah, I've seen them. Like, remember how, Some um, well, Peg- I didn't see the first one. Peggy Carter was, uh, Sharon Carter's aunt. When they, when, uh, Sharon first showed up in the sixties, like she was, she was Peggy's sister. And then after a while, they just made her like the niece instead of the sister. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause they needed her to be younger. Oh yeah. Cause it's like, uh, it's like, well, if Peggy was still in world war two, it's like Sharon really going to be her sister like 50 years later, you know? This is true. This is true. So anyway, but whatever. I thought it was mostly interesting for that they're saying that there's 17 years between Bruce and Dick, which could basically mean, which means they could definitely have a father son relationship. Definitely. I mean, I know sometimes they try to have it be like older brother, younger brother, but 17 years, mm, that's really more of a dad and son. Exactly. All right. So. I just thought it was in- I just was skipping through and I thought it was interesting and nice of the comics to admit yes we selectively age it's magic we can make people whatever age we want deal with it <laughs> exactly they do it all the time again especially like you have a character who first appeared in the you know Batman 1939 he's still around in 2021 it's like yeah you gotta play with the ages and stuff yeah obviously for sure alright all right. so Fun stuff. What do we have on tap for next week, Phil? All right. Next time we have, oh, because this was episode 97. We're getting so close to 100 with our big uh, thing there. I don't know if we announced that. Maybe, maybe we'll wait, surprise the kids until like, <laughs> we'll announce it on 99. Okay. But next week, 98, we are covering, oh, the fir- uh, Convergence miniseries. So Nightwing and Oracle 1 and 2. Oh, a wedding again! Yes. What? A Dick Grayson. Phil, it's like you. Phil, it's like you planned this. A Dick Grayson and Barbara Gordon wedding. Another one. Yes. Another one. Oh. Let's see what happens in this one. Will they get shot? Only time will tell. And then, epi- and then, two weeks episode ninety nine convergence new Teen Titans where Nightwing is married to Starfire. Oh dang! Dick's on a matrimonial streak. Who is he? Bruce Wayne? Bruce Wayne's, uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, Bruce Wayne has been pretend married. He's, yeah... Wait, so he was married to Catwoman for in Earth 2. Has he ever been married to Talia? No, way. he was in that, what, Daughter of the Demon thing, Elseworld? Was he married to her, or... I don't no? know if they were actually married, or they were planning on getting married, but, yeah, that okay. eventually fell through. Yeah, I don't think Earth 1 Bruce has ever been, like, married officially, I don't think. No. But, uh, well, I mean, you know, Dick Grayson's never been married officially. <laughs> well, yeah, this is like all alternate stuff. But so, yeah, so, yeah, kids, send your thoughts on. Uh, yeah. The- well, you know, June is the traditional month of weddings. So here we go. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yes. All right. Kids. We're cramming all, all manner of weddings in. All right, kids. So send your thoughts on those. And then, like I said, episode 99 will announce what we're doing on 100. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember to follow Nightwing News on Facebook, Twitter. Find links to all of our various uh, social medias for all our various shows. Links to this YouTube channel. Links to... uh, patreon links to merch link links to everything all in one place that's linktree l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e slash capes and lunatics and remember to follow all things southgate media group go to southgatemediagroup.com check out the website uh southgate media group also has a website or a patreon just like capes and lunatics uh, a bunch of free stuff there from everyone on the network uh, a bunch of paid stuff too so go check all those out and of course Inc. Uh, can also support us by uh, go pick up Pod Life the book now in digital and paperback, and also fans of this show go pick up Dick Grace and Boy Wonder, put together by you know who. I mean, damn backwards camera. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> so yes, yeah, so uh, and you can buy both of those on Amazon. When you do, use the link for Southgate Media Group right down there in the show notes. Help us support this show, the network, and that fancy man himself. Loves the trap doors. Rob, Master Doom's Southgate. Make it rain. So says Master Doom. Please kick me in the pants. Go back and look at my history. Okay. 
All right, I don't want to get into the. I mean, I don't know if you saw the story. Uh, supposedly, they cut for the Harley Quinn animated series season three coming up. They cut um, a certain type of lovemaking scene between Batman and Catwoman out of it. I guess. Wait, what? No, I didn't see any of this uh, stuff. Oh well, again, it's a it's a mature cartoon, so it's like. All right. Uh, real quick, <laughs> I guess they were gonna have. I didn't know that. I guess they were gonna have Batman performing oral sex on Catwoman, and they were just like. Oh, wow. I guess, wow. I guess some executive was like, yeah, no, we're trying to sell toys. But meanwhile, everyone was up in arms there. Just At first, everyone was just like, oh, yeah, well, you had him sleep with Batgirl and Killing Joke and, you know, all this other, you know, they're like, you do all this other stuff. And then uh, then I just see like the the line of tweets. Everyone's just like, oh, yeah, well, because I saw him, I'm like, why is Nightwing trending? And everyone's just like, oh, yeah, you know, Nightwing would be a very generous lover. I'm like, Batman. <laughs> That's right. kids. Yeah. Batman is selfish. They. Yeah, I mean, if it's a mo- you're not going to show your kids the Harley Quinn show. No. But again, they're, they they like they're like yeah, you know, the Killing Joke. Yeah, Harley almost like raping Nightwing in that Batman Harley Quinn movie. It's just like I mean, not really almost. I mean, he was he was drugged and tied up. Yeah, exactly. And that was we that was creepy and they're, uncalled for. They're just like you know, really. It's a that strange, movie was so bad. That movie was so bad. There's a strange line in the sand to be drawn, kids. You know. Uh. All right. I just thought I'd mention that. Lightweight, very generous lover. Alright, kids, yes. I'm back next two weeks. Well, basically, 98, 99, and then I think we have another convergence on uh, episode 101, but we're going to break it up a little bit for episode 100. So send your thoughts on all these good things in marriage. Was the tux the best one? Was the red tux the best one? Absolutely. <laughs> That's right, dancer. So you can subscribe to the YouTube. All right. Again, come back in one week for another wedding. But until then, join us same wing time. Same wing channel. The Nightwing News. Hi, I'm one of the High Priests of Conchu Ray, and I have the sacred privilege of providing you, the loony listener, with a podcast honoring Marvel's very own Moon Knight. So join me and a host of others at Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or support the show by becoming a Patreon member. Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. It's time to get your Conchu on.